Alright, so Glad Rap Channel here with Robert the Butcher Barrage. Uh, so we're here in New Plymouth at the Crowded House at the Wayne. How you feeling, Robin? How's it going? Uh, feeling good, man. Yeah. Uh, feeling pumped after seeing the weigh-in and stuff. So it should be a good crowd there tomorrow. What, what weight did you make? 78.8. And is that is that your normal, you know, the weight you walk around in, or? Uh, I walk around about 84. So is it is it a hard thing for you to make weight, or is that a challenge, or? Uh, the body knows uh, the body knows what to do. You know, it's been doing it for 30 something fights. So. So, what does the butcher like to eat? You know, after a weigh-in, what's the like? Do you have a favorite food that you like to? Uh, I was craving a roast meal tonight, but we got uh, burgers, so I couldn't turn down the free burgers. You know what I mean? <laughs> I remember somebody asked you um, how you feeling at the airport, and you said hungry. Yeah. And then you mentioned the roast. So, you know, yeah. the butcher eating roast. Yeah. So, Robert, I uh, have to give you major props from your last fight. You face unbeaten number one WBC lightweight contender, Elder Alvarez. Light heavyweight. Light heavyweight, light heavyweight sorry. Yeah. Was, it, was it difficult to, you know, to prepare for a top level opponent and, you know, in the other side of the world in such short notice? Was that... Well, when you've only got five days to prepare, you don't have much to go on, you know what I mean? So, we watched two videos did a bit of pad work to suit what his style was going to be and then we went over and just boxed, tried to do our thing, you know. Was there any hesitation to take in the fight? No, nah, never. Nah, you never, never turn out an opportunity to go over, over the other side of the world and face a top contender. Can't turn that now. So, you know, I was watching the, I watched the fight live actually and you were having success, um, success in that fight. You were landing lefts on Alvarez. You know, you were able to come and hit him clean, you know, all night long. Um, how did you rate your performance that night? I was stoked my performance, you know, like, I thought, I felt like I fought smart. Um, I feel like Cleveland Vasco and me worked well together in those five days leading up to the fight to prepare well for him, so, um, yeah, I think we did well. And, you know, being in his backyard, did that phase you at all, you know? Well, no, that was another thing, was to try and use that against him, like, uh, try and make the fight boring and make the crowd boom. You know, and we started hearing the booze, and that kind of pumped me up because I knew I was doing it right then, you know, I knew I was making it boring and not letting him do his game plan, you know, so. By boring, do you mean uh, being smart, you know? Uh, yeah, like, yeah, 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 but, you know, backtracking yeah. and just slipping, not throwing too many punches, and also I couldn't throw too many punches because I didn't know how fit I was, you know, I had fought in months, and I did a five-day preparation for the world number four, so I wasn't going to go in there and try and, you know, bust myself out. To nothing, you know. Because he was supposed to fight what? Chad Dawson, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, yes. Yeah, and Chad Dawson pulled out at the last minute and then. Knee injury or something, yeah. yeah. So, does that, does, that, uh, does that boost your confidence going the distance with somebody as skillful as him? No, I think just for that fight, my style of fighting on that night was just perfect. I don't think it boosts my confidence. It's nice to know I can go 10 rounds in five days preparation. Um, so let's hope the camp that I had for this fight is the proper camp that I needed to go another 10 rounds. And you got if cut it, if it goes that far, you know. Yeah. Did you get cut in that in that round in the last round then? Or? Yeah. Yeah. I'm still healing up. You know, yeah. like obviously if I let myself be hit tomorrow night, I'm going to open up again, which I don't want. So I need to be, like I say, I need to be smart. Because you turned down the last fight, eh? That, that was supposed to happen at Time to Shine because of the cut. I think? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So um, let's talk about you know your fight with Sam Rapira. What do you know about Sam? I know he's always fit. I know he's tough. Like, he's obviously got the heart. So I remember he got knocked down in his first fight here and came back to win on points. So you know. Um, but other than that, not a lot. You know, he has the size and reach advantage. Plus, he will also have the hometown advantage. Um, how do you see this fight playing out? Well, so was Alvarez. He was height and reach advantage and hometown advantage. And so, you know, I'm used to that. You know, I'm used to being the underdog in a lot of fights. It doesn't bother me. Um, I got, I got family, friends coming from Auckland, coming from Wanganui. Um, so, you know, hopefully they can make a bit of noise as well. And um, yeah, can you talk to us about training? I know you train at Redline. What's like an average day of training for you? I mean, uh, uh, a lot of pad work, a lot of strength work. It's mainly strength, conditioning, and pad work. Uh, I work 45 hours a week. Um, so you work full time? I'm not a proper professional. I work 45 hours a week. Oh, okay, so I, I know have, that. I have to sort my training out after work. Um, so yeah, so I do a lot of after hours stuff. 
is that hard for you to balance like a full-time job and then you know being a family man and then boxing yep yeah what, what makes you do this you know what makes you persevere and is it the love of the sport or I don't think I love boxing uh, I like to be paid to fight I guess um, of course the fights they excite me I feel my love for boxing isn't that intense because it's so corrupt I don't like boxing because it's corruption so. could you go in some in some more detail so what do you mean by corruption like uh, uh, you know, the judges just, yeah, or judges and refs and yeah. you know just that I'm not going to say more because I might <laughs> it's a tricky business though, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it's always been like that, It's right? hard, you know, you fight, you go to someone's hometown or you go away overseas and you fight not only the fighter but the, the three judges and the referee, so... Does yeah. that come into play when you're fighting, you know, like um, thinking of the other factors? Oh, definitely you want to knock them out and make it certain, you know, so... Yeah. Not leave it in the, in the judge's hands. Yeah. So now I know you got a trip planned to Rarotonga. I mean, have you already planned your post-fight celebrations? Or? No, no, that was planned way before this fight was even thought of. Um, so that's a family vacation. My wife and baby are already over there. So I want to get this fight done. I'll fly out the day after. So it's not a it's not a vacation to celebrate. It's a hang out with my family. Got it. Got it. And uh, just the last fight, you know, your your, your next fight is going to be with Adrian Tahir. Um, what message do you have for him if he's watching? I just hope he's on his game. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Robert, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it and all the best for tomorrow, man. Yeah, too, yeah thank you for your time. Thank you. Cheers.